Welcome, folks. I'm Jabby Kawai, joined by Andrew the Flash Gordon. We're looking at Zoolander. It's our first time watching this movie, and we're watching it together with y'all. Thanks so much for joining us. If this is your first time here, hit that subscribe button, bell icon, all notifications, and vote this up. Let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching. That is assuming that you're watching it on YouTube. If you're watching it on YouTube, you will see a cut-down version of our reaction because we can only show you a limited amount of picture in picture. But if you want to watch the whole movie with us, no cuts or interruptions, head over to our Patreon page, patreon.com slash Jabby Kawai. There's a link in the description below or you could become a member of this YouTube channel so you can watch the whole movie with us no cuts or interruptions but you will need your own copy of the film so you can open it up in an adjacent window to our reaction and it's like you're watching with two of your favorite pals from the internet so uh, if you're watching this on Patreon or memberships already thanks so much for supporting us here really appreciate y'all if you join our Patreon or memberships if you haven't already uh, you get access to a whole library of stuff we've already been putting on there for a while including the Zack Snyder's Justice League watch along and all the Marvel shows the boys and my first time watching 10 things I hate about you Andrew's first time watching the thing how about that yeah so here we go As the newly elected prime minister has given this impoverished nation the gift of hope promising to raise the substandard minimum wage and end child labor once and for all. This is disgusting. How could you let this happen? I have negotiated my butt off, Giorgio. <laughs> <laughs> The Malaysian Prime Minister visits New York in 14 days. That's not enough time. It takes months to recruit and train an operative. We need an empty vessel, a shallow, dumb, vacuous monon. I mean, where in all of God's green goodness am I going to find someone that beast headed? Derek, I just have a few more questions, if that's okay. Cool. So when did you know you wanted to be a model? Hmm, I guess it would have to be the first time I went through the second grade. I caught my reflection with <laughs> I was cereal, and I remember good looking. Maybe you could do that for a career. Do what? Be professionally good looking. Right. What would you say your trademark is, if you have one? Well, I guess the look I'm best known for is blue steel. What's that look like? <laughs> Our tea is a lot softer. It's a little bit uh, more of a catalog look. I use it for footwear sometimes. Can I see that? <laughs> it's the same exact look. So do you spend a lot of time working on these looks, thinking about them? Oh, sure. I've been working on Magnum for at least last eight or nine years. Can I see that? Are you kidding? I shouldn't even be talking about it. It's nowhere near ready. Uh, Derek, I don't know if you're familiar with the belief that some Aboriginal tribes hold. It's the concept that a photo might steal a part of your soul. I mean, what are your thoughts on that as someone gets his picture taken for a living? Well, I guess I would have to answer your question with another question. How many Aboriginals do you see modeling? <laughs> <laughs> Three-time male model of the year. Oh my lord. <laughs> and that's who Derek Zoolander is defending his title oh against God. tonight. Alright, alright, alright. Got some sons to support the Prime Minister! Oh, his Ben Stiller's mom. Oh, yeah, I hate to see something like that at an event like this. Ugly protesters bothering beautiful people. Uh. <laughs> Derek, Derek, are you worried about Hansel? Uh, not as much as I'm worried about Gretel. <laughs> Here are the nominees for Male Model of the Year. I wasn't like every other kid, you know, who dreams about being an astronaut. I was always more interested in uh, what bark was made out of on a tree. <laughs> Richard Gere is a real hero of mine. Sting. Sting would be another person who's a hero. The music that he's created over the years, I don't really listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> the original Greek word model means misshapen ball of clay. And I try to think about that every time I get in front of the camera. What the fuck? Time male model of the year. Derek Zoolander. He's actually, or at least at that time, he was actually that cut. He worked out. And the award goes to Hansel. <laughs> Look at his reaction. Uh, 
That's embarrassing. You know, a lot of people said winning this award four years in a row couldn't happen. Oh my god. That's so cringy. I think we found our solution. <laughs> <laughs> You know what could really help you sort through these important issues? What? Orange mocha frappuccino! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Yeah! yeah. Come, on, man. Come on! Come on! Two male models actually live together? Like, I've never actually investigated or like researched anything about like the life of the male model or female models for that matter. <laughs> Eric Zoolander, a model, idiot. <laughs> so stupid. Oh no. <laughs> so random. Golly, what an explosion. Like the product placement there too. That was so epic. People, I'd like to announce my retirement from the male modeling profession. I'm pretty sure there's a lot more to life than being really, really good looking. <laughs> Actually, I'm trying to talk to Mugatu, but he's tougher to get to than the president. Oh, thought you were gonna tell me what a bad Yagoogalizer I am. A what? A Yagoogalizer, one who speaks at funerals. <laughs> it took me a second. Mugatu wants you for his new campaign. I just retired. But this is Mugatu, Derek. I'm going back home. I need to get in touch with my roots. Figure out who I am. That must have been cool to act opposite of your dad. <laughs> hey, Pop. No way. John Voight on Vince Vaughn. You remember your brother, right? What do you want? I thought maybe I could work the mines with you guys. Oh my lord. All the Zoolander men together again, like when we were kids. Times have changed, boy. You wouldn't last one day down those coal pits. Can't you even pretend to be happy to see me, Pop? Damn it, Derek. I'm a coal miner, not a professional film or television actor. <laughs> <laughs> Was pretty cut back then. Surprise! What the hell's the matter with you? Why would he do that so random? <laughs> God. It's not very well ventilated down there. For Christ's sake, Derek, you've been down there one day. Talk to me in 30 years. Oh, my Lord. Oh, God. All I ever wanted to do was make you proud of me, Pop. With what? Your male modeling? Prancing around in your underwear with your wiener hanging out for everyone to see? You're dead to me, boy. Whoa. You're more dead to me than your dead mother. Jeez. I just thank the Lord she didn't live to see her son as a mermaid. Merman. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you finish touching your roots because Mugatu's making you an offer you won't believe. You gotta get your tuchas back here. Your tuchas. Good Yiddish. And now you're retired. I can't have you. And it's funny how it switches like that. But now the forbidden fruit must be tasted. Well, when Maury told me what you were willing to do, uh, I... Uh, <laughs> are you not aware that I get farty and bloated with a foamy latte? My mistake, Jacobin. Your mistake indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back to the reason that we're really here. I give you the Derek Zoolander Center for Kids Who Can't Read Good. <laughs> how can we be expected to teach children to learn how to read if they can't even fit inside the building? <laughs> I have a vision. And so do I. Let me show you mine. I wonder if you can buy that Mugatu sweater somewhere. Let me show you. Derelict! 
And I want you, Derek, to be the face of Derelict. Derek, I'd like you to meet Katinka Inga Borgovna. Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> the big the, show is in eight days, Derek. I know that's a joke, but that feels so real. Keep pulling the sweater. Excuse me? Eventually the whole thing will unravel. You mean if you pull the thread, the whole thing will unravel? Now you're talking, sister. If you want to know more, go to Pier 12. Things aren't what they seem. Is that David Duchovny? I don't like him. <laughs> She's like a Nazi. <laughs> Oh my gosh. What are you doing here, Derek? I thought you quit the business. Ugh. Haven't you heard? I'm the new face of Mugatu's derelict campaign. How do you feel, Derek? Okay. When's the seaweed wrap? You shut up now. I want you to relax and breathe deeply. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> this song of course you do hello Derek what is this from clockwork orange thing just relax, relax. relax. hey there Derek oh my god <laughs> <laughs> you're a super hot ninja What a cuckoo dream. I've been trying to reach you for a week. A week? What are you, having a whack attack? I saw you this afternoon, dum-dum. That was last Friday. Uh, Earth to Matilda. I was at a day spa. Day. D-A-I-Y-E. <laughs> I don't care what the date says. You have 1,200 messages. Oh my God. Whoa. What happened in that spa? I don't know. A little massage, some aromatherapy. I mean... Look, lady, you can't just come barging into people's lofts, wanting sex, then changing your mind. <sighs> Do you understand that the world does not revolve around you and your do-whatever-it-takes, ruin as many people's lives, so long as you can make a name for yourself as an investigatory journalist, no matter how many friends you lose, or people you leave dead and bloodied along the way? I do not like Snoopy reporter with lack of fashion sense. <laughs> no. I used to have the biggest crush on her. Of course, man. Fifth element. She's on the male models who've appeared in Mugatu campaigns. It's pretty weird. It seems like all of Mr. Mugatu's models have a bad habit of dying young in freak accidents. What? <laughs> Death and tragic orgy. Jesus. Wait a second. What? That's some high tech computer. A resolution and Hey, I just need to speak with Derek Zoolander, please. I just thought the way you handled right losing <laughs> that award to Hansel, and then you sort of laid low for a while and then made your comeback. It was so courageous. Look, I gotta go pee, but Hey, I got a wacky idea. What say we settle this on the runway? minutes old members only warehouse remember how popular those things were back in the day yeah. razors of course you might want to know your boy Zealand is rolling it's the walk off that guy looks so gross <laughs> what the hell <laughs> Yuck. I can do this, Tyson. Oh, God. 
gosh, is there going to be a something about Mary moment here? Thank God I wore underwear today. Disqualified. Derek, come on. Come on. Oh, at least he didn't get stuck in the zipper. Hello. If you want answers, come to St. Adonis Cemetery now. Wait, wait, wait. Who are you? That's definitely David Duchovny. Listen and learn, sweetness. Abe Lincoln wanted to abolish slavery, right? And without their free labor, prices on such items would have gone up tenfold. So the powers that be hired John Wilkes Booth, the original model slash actor, to do Mr. Lincoln in. Uh. And most important of all, models don't think for themselves. They do as they're told. That is not true. Yes, it is, Derek. Okay. <laughs> You're a killing machine, Derek. They programmed you. But I won't do it. I won't kill anybody. It's not up to you. At the proper moment, they'll trigger you. Usually using some kind of auditory or visual Pavlovian response mechanism. Audi what the? You gotta get to Maury Bolstein's computer. He he recorded everything in case they ever turn. Get out of here. Hang in there, JB. Ah! Oh no. Derek, where's the last place anyone would ever expect to look for you? I don't know. Think, okay? This is important. Hansel's. Hansel, Hansel! Everywhere I look, Hansel, Hansel, Hansel! Derek has been brainwashed to kill the Prime Minister of Malaysia. And? <laughs> Derek and Matilda are in hiding because some dudes brainwashed Derek to off the Prime Minister of Micronesia. Malaysia. Right. Micronesia. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be hiding here for a little while. Let's show them a good time. Will you get some of that tea that me and Lopsang got when we were free climbing the Mayan ruins? Okay, let go. That'd be the most trippy place to hang. After the Frankie folks gave him the heave-ho, he held the series of odd jobs until, get this, he invented the piano key necktie in 1985. Oh, my God. <laughs> There's so many jokes you cannot do today. Uh, yeah. Wow, that's such an old computer. To press the Apple thing. Oh, God. This is so painful. It's 2001 Space Odyssey. Throw the keyboard in the air. Oh, the bone. Let's not lose our cool. Then we're no better than the machine. It's almost seven. I gotta go. No! Derek, Derek, wait. If you go, they'll make you kill that Eurasian dude. I don't care, Hansel. I've never been late for a show in my life. And I don't plan on starting now. If anything happens to me, I want you to give this to Matilda. <sighs> no. Please, Hansel, take it. I'll just say, I'll hold on to it. Will you get back? Go! Did you find the files? Look, what do they look like? They're in the computer. They're in the computer? Yeah, they're definitely in there. I just don't know how he labeled them. We're running out of time, Hansel. You gotta find them and meet me at the show. In the computer. Oh God, this is so painful. Jeez. You just seem a little tense. I was trying to help you relax. Relax? The last thing I need to do right now is relax. Two minutes, Derek. Ah, oh, there he is. I just want to wish you uh, good luck. Don't you mean goodbye? What are you talking? Is that the Godfather music? Yeah. I know it was you, Maury. <laughs> I know it was you. And it breaks my heart. <laughs> I am really, really dirty. I am derelict. <laughs> Derek Zuland will be dead, and you'll be fine. You always are. Come on, Derek, you're on. Oh. 
<laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> dude <laughs> he knew his career was over and he couldn't face it no way compadre we got 30 years worth of files right here in this computer that are gonna bring you down oh no, don't throw it uh. where'd all the files go oh man hands stupid destroyed everything I got two words for you sugar Zip disk. The whole thing is in my den in Long Island. I can have that evidence here in 20 minutes. At a boy, Maury. Hold on a sec. I'm afraid of the radiation. <laughs> Sheila, honey, it's me. Listen, I need you to bring that zip disk in the den down to the fashion show. Enough already, Ballstein! Who cares about Derek Zoolander anyway? The man has only one look for Christ's sake. Blue steel? Ferrari? La Tigra? They're the same face! Doesn't anyone notice this? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills! <laughs> I invented the piano key necktie! I invented it! What have you done, Derek? Nothing! You've done nothing! <laughs> because if you can't get the job done, then I will! Die, you wage-hiking scum! Oh, God. Propecia. Oh, my gosh. We teach students of all ages everything they need to know to learn to be a professional model and a professional human being. Our diverse faculty includes business management teacher and former model agent Maury Ballstein. The designer's got your nuts in a vice, offering you 10 million plus 3% of every pair of underwear sold. What are you gonna do? Screw it! <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. So join now, because at the Derek Zoolander Center for Kids Who Can't Read Good and want to learn to do other stuff good too, we teach you that there's more to life than just being really, really, really good looking. Hey, Hansel. Hey, D-Rock. I'm going to take these kids over to George Washington Bridge. Give them a little lesson in base jumping. <laughs> All right. What? All 
All right, guys, last one, the helicopter's right next. Let's go! Yeah! <laughs> hey, Matilda. There's Daddy. Hey. Hi. How's Derek Jr.? It's great. Guess what? He made his first look today. Really? You want to show Daddy your look, Derek Jr.? Yeah. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey, you guys want to hang out for story hour? Great. <laughs> oh, the the guys yeah. who burned the gas. So. Yeah. That's a little bigger than the model. So this was a big surprise for me because the first 45 minutes was really cracking me up. Usually films that are labeled a comedy don't work on me too well. I'm a weird dude. I like comedy when it's not branded a comedy, but more of like action comedy, like Lethal Weapon, Rush Hour, or drama with jokes in it, you know? Stuff like that usually works on me better. I'm a big fan of the show Friends. It's rare when something that is actually labeled comedy actually, you know, strikes a chord with me. The first 45 minutes actually had me cracking up. After that, it was more like grins, smiles, cringe moments, up until the very, very end when his son... <laughs> when his son had that, that expression on his face. But overall, I mean, I had a good time. For me, this was like a win because the fact that I was laughing as much as I did at all in this movie was a victory for Jabby Kuwait. I don't uh, tend to laugh at the things that everybody else is laughing at. It's true. I've been in the movie theaters with you plenty of times and normally when everyone else is laughing, I'll look at you and say, I'm like why isn't why isn't Chappy yeah. laughing? Like so, <laughs> this is a very true statement. I can verify this. Okay. But yeah. No. I I really enjoyed this film. I mean, I'd been obviously. I know it's a cult classic, and I've been hearing so many. So the hype level was like, you know, there. No, I enjoyed it. It was an interesting take on the uh, on the fashion, or excuse me, on the. Um, yeah, the fashion the, industry. Yeah, fashion and uh, modeling industry. Yeah, no, I mean, it was cracking me up, too. And uh, I, probably one of my favorite roles ever from Vince Vaughn. You know, he really uh, had a lot of dialogue in this movie. But, you know, they really went full stop on all the celebrities. I wasn't expecting to see so many celebrities. I mean, I, I, didn't, I didn't really know too much about this film. I knew Ben Stiller was in it, but, you know, it was, uh, he really went full stop. I mean, I like comedies where it's so dumb, it's funny. I mean, like Anchorman and other films like that. So, I mean, I, I personally like films like that. I mean, there can be films where it's like, all right, it's too dumb. It's not even funny anymore. And I, I think this one had a good balance personally for yeah, me. Yeah. Um, there were a, a couple moments from like, all right, a little bit forced, but overall I felt, I feel it was really balanced out. I did like the character of Matilda. I feel, I feel like she really bounced out because she was playing it more straight uh, than the rest of the cast or the rest of the characters rather and I enjoyed the camaraderie and the character interactions with her and Derek and Hansel I thought they were all great together I did a little research too on the film uh, I saw that M uh, Mila Jovich uh, she actually based her character performance on her mother <laughs> like I don't know what? How that's that's what I read I don't really know. yeah I don't know how accurate that was but um, that's what I read so interesting wow you know there's this one moment in the movie that kind of flies by that stood out to me, which is something I feel like no other reviewer would probably talk about, but it's when they were walking past the skateboard ramp. The three of them yeah. were walking, like, just chill, and the skateboarders were going right past them. I'm like, that is way more dangerous than you think. Oh, yeah. Like, just pulling that off with great timing, all for the... I don't know why they did that, though. It's like, is it for the jokes? Because they're just walking on a skateboard ramp, not minding the fact that... Because that's not visual effects. They wanted to show Tom Cruise what a real stunt looks like. Yeah. You know? So, I mean... <laughs> But uh, no, I mean, I, I think Ben Stiller, you know, he the first film I had ever seen him direct yeah. was Cable Guy. So I think he's really, uh, and I- He directed this? But yeah, Ben Stiller directed this. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, the fr like I said, the first film I ever direct, uh, saw him or uh, watched that he directed was The Cable Guy with Jim Carrey back in 96. And I freaking love that movie. It's a really I enjoyed dark- the Cable Guy. Yeah, it's a really yeah. dark comedy with Jim Carrey. And this is a different kind of comedy. And Tropic Thunder, love that movie mm -hmm. too. So obviously we have not seen Zoolander 2. I know it's not got as high praise as this film, but I think Ben Stiller really does comedy well and he does physical comedy as well. He's got a good uh, eye for that. And I just really, again, I, I think he does a good job of just uh, meshing the characters and the interactions really seamlessly and organically. And I just, I, I really enjoyed this film. It was a lot of fun. And if it has me cracking up and it's not too over the top dumb, you know, it works for me. And I, yeah. I just, I really found myself really enjoying this film. This is my second favorite Ben Stiller role after his guest appearance in Friends. That was my favorite, favorite Ben Stiller moment. Man, for me, my favorite, uh, I think most people are going to agree with me. I mean, probably side with you because most people never side 
side with me, but I, I, I got to go with uh, Heavyweights, uh, Tony Perkis. I never saw that. Oh, man, you got to watch that one. That's so good. Dude, that's the first role I ever saw Ben Stiller in as Tony Perkis. He mm. is so freaking hysterical in that movie. He's crazy, but he's yeah. hysterical in that movie, so you definitely got to check that one out. Uh, this seemed like a, you know Will Ferrell was, was, say, was yeah. more reserved than his usual roles. Like I mean, he had his moment at the end where he like really went out of control. I guess it was sort of this buildup to that moment because before he just lost it and tried to murder the Malaysian prime minister himself. I thought that uh, he was restrained compared to what I usually see with him, like in uh, old school and all that stuff. Yeah, well, this is a couple years before old. This is 2001, old school is 2003. So I feel like, I mean, he was definitely, Night the Roxbury was 98, so he was still up on the rise. He wasn't like in a position yet, I feel like, where he's got total control of, hey, I'm going to do it this way or that way. I mean, yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I, I I thought his performance was great, and yeah, no, I I think my favorite speech was like, he's only got one look, it's not even that good, like I just, and then when he threw the shirt, was it a shuriken that he threw? Or? Yes, yeah, <laughs> that that felt like a Matrix moment to me. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. And then when he's like, it's beautiful. Some of the uh, dialogue and moments in this just had me just balling, cracking up, yeah. No, yeah. Will Ferrell was great. I mean, everyone was great in this. I loved it. And there were just so many unexpected cameos. I just was like, oh. David Bowie or Winona Ryder, Natalie Portman. I just yeah. was not expecting so. I think that for me, the film peaked around the time that uh, Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson made up. Once they apologized to each other and hugged it out, I think that's when that was when the film peaked in terms of like the ha-has and you know the comedy, and the entertainment value, and all that stuff. Like it really had me all along the way up until that moment. Yeah. And then after that, it felt like it was just what. Well, this is kind of what happens with. Actually, like with romantic films, like very sexually charged films, where it's like you you front end it, you front load it with all the dis, uh, what do you call it? explicit scenes, like um, Unfaithful, for instance. You know, the first hours where you you front end it, or first forty five minutes where you front end it with all the sex stuff, and then after that it becomes a drama, and it's very very serious. And they tried to maintain comedy throughout it with like the goofy looks and whatnot. It's weird because like two thousand one, it, it doesn't even feel that long ago, and yet like the landscape of comedy has totally changed where so much of this is just taboo now. It's crazy to me. But thankfully, we still have it on streaming, so we can enjoy it. Yeah. No, I'm definitely going to rewatch this one again because yeah. I'm sure there were a couple things here and there that I'm like that I'm going to pick up because for me first viewing is always processing so much new information mm -hmm. then picking up things like even that that thing you mentioned that uh, them walking through the skateboarders like for some reason I wasn't even thinking about them then as you said I was like oh yeah they're walking past three skateboarders in the timing that like little things like that so yeah that's pretty well I mean there's a lot going on first off it almost reminds me of how they're doing like the drone shots today. I know that's a weird comparison, but just stick with me on this. Because like, uh, what's his name? Jake Gyllenhaal was working on uh, paramedic or ambulance, whatever the name of the film is with Michael Bay. And he's like, oh yeah, I'm good, I'm good, I can do this. And Michael Bay's like, it's gonna come right at you, but they'll stop so you don't have to freak out. And Jake Gyllenhaal's like, I got it, I'm, I'll be all right. And the drone flies at him and he just ducks out the way because he's scared. But the thing is you have professional drone flyers, pilots rather, who are gonna stop it on a dime where they're supposed to, right? And so you these skateboarders, you have professional skateboarders who you're supposed to trust, but you as the actor, you're still having to like go through this scene, act cool, act normal, as this danger is flying past you, yeah. you know? I mean, that's kind of epic. It's, I don't know why they threw that in there. <laughs> yeah, no, it seems like such a subtle moment, but yeah. then when you watch the actors, like, that was actually rather impressive. It seems like such a relaxing thing, or like such a stressful thing, but they do it so in such a relaxing way. Like, yeah. That's impressive. It's hit and miss for me with Owen Wilson. I liked him in Shanghai Noon. I didn't like him in Shanghai Nights. I still um, have not seen that he, one if I saw Shanghai Noon. He, he was all right in uh, Meet the Parents. What else? Is I, I've seen him in a whole bunch of stuff. What about Anna? Conda. I don't even remember him in that. Yeah, he was Gary. Wow. I don't know how I remember his name from that. I don't... Oh, um, I think the that... Camera, the I, camera guy. He was in Royal Tenenbaums, right? I like him in Wes Anderson films, generally speaking, because I, I feel like him and Wes Anderson have a good rapport. Here, it was like, okay, he's cool. I think that Ben Stiller just completely destroyed him in terms of just the funniness. When Owen Wilson was doing stuff, it felt a little forced by comparison, but it still gave me a chuckle from time to time. You know? Yeah, and in and some alternate universe, we can say this is the prequel to Wedding Crashers because we got sure. Vince Vaughn and Owen Wilson in here. But yeah, no, I'm uh, totally I'm totally in agreement with you that Ben Stiller you know. as Derek Zoolander, he was it's comedy in this. Yeah. He was 
so freaking hysterical but i still really again i really enjoyed owen wilson yeah. I, I really like their character interactions together and their camaraderie and yeah, yeah it kind of did peak a little bit when they get to uh when they make up but fortunately there wasn't much of the film left after that so yeah. all that being said as far as my opinion for owen wilson in this role there was no other person i could think of from that era that would have been better suited for this role. I mean, the guy who's sort of hippy-dippy and has this environment where he's got all kinds of people from around the globe in his um, humble abode. Someone who's like smoking peyote. I, I don't even know how you, you know, take peyote. You smoke it? I believe I, like, so. I don't I'm know anything sure. about peyote, but like, I just know it like really messes you up. But an individual who was constantly like on drugs and like exploring the deep recesses of his mind, you know, and just finding himself one with the yeah. universe. I see yeah. Owen Wilson as that dude. Like, he is the perfect person to play that oh, kind yeah, of role. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I, I love that line, too, where he's like, in Sting, I don't listen to his music, but I respect it. Right, That's exactly. Awesome. Yeah, that was funny. But, yeah, and I think t I, uh, when I was researching this film as well, I think it said that Ben Stiller did not consider anyone for that role of Hansel except for Owen. Like, it was specifically sense. made for Owen Wilson. That and we're only going to have him do it. I know that you, you were sort of making jokes about Vince Vaughn not having too many lines in this. Didn't have one line, did he? But, or, I guess, that's fair he didn't yeah. say anything it was just expressions yeah but i actually thought that what he did was perfect like yeah. vince vaughn i mean he was good at just sort of the reaction i liked it i liked i liked him as that guy i just wish that he joined uh, john voight at the end of being proud of his brother yeah you know? no i agree it would have been a nice payoff to have a line or so but i mean i still i was cool with john voight being proud of his son but yeah, yeah. And again oh. this was early days for vince vaughn too i think he did domestic disturbance with john travolta this year oh, wow. 2001 so Nath yeah. nathan lee graham plays todd who is uh, will ferrell's assistant in the movie yeah he was perfect oh yeah he he was that perfect like it was like that weird relationship of assistant slash lover i just want to please you and just sort of intense feminine <laughs> <laughs> Whatever yeah. that energy was, yeah. was perfect. I thought he nailed it. No, for sure. And I, I liked their chemistry. And also, too, you could really feel the history together mm -hmm. when, whenever they're on screen together that, okay, they've been working with each other for a very long time. And I always appreciate that whenever I'm watching film or TV shows when you really feel like the actors, they have a history with each other. And, you know, it gets a little more personal for me when I when I see that. But, yeah, no, he was great. And I think uh, another movie I ever saw him in was Hitch, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my two favorites, my two standout favorites in the film have to be Mila Jovovich and Jerry Stiller. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, Stiller. I, Mila Jovovich is just like, I mean, I'm always biased towards her, but Jerry Stiller is also someone, I, like every time I see him, he doesn't have to do much, but he's just got a comical sense about his energy that I always enjoy. And so two of my favorites in the film. Dude, he's freaking Jason Alexander's father, man, in Seinfeld, of course. Yeah. He's just freaking hysterical. And I like that Ben Stiller also cast a lot of his family in this movie, he put his mom and his dad, and I think his sister-in-law, yeah. or excuse me, his sister was one of the uh, people in Hansel's apartment. I believe so. I could be totally wrong. And his brother-in-law was also in there as well. So, mm. yeah, it's really cool. He's got that uh, Adam Sandler dynamic of friends and family in the film. So Yeah. You guys, thanks so much for hanging out. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Do let us know your feelings in the comments below. Was it fun to revisit this with us? Thank you. Either way, I'm Jabby Kawe. This is Andrew the Flash Gordon. Peace out.